What's up, guys? I'm GamerMDD3, and I am joined by a very special person today. Her name is Penka Kuneva. She is a film and game composer. She has worked on a lot of our favorite movies and games. Just to name a few, she has worked on movies such as Transformers, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Matrix, and my personal favorite, Ender's Game. Absolutely love that movie. And when it comes to games, she has worked on pretty much all of Blizzard's major franchises like World of Warcraft, Starcraft, and the Diablo series. She's also worked on Dragon Age, Dragon Age 2 to be spe specific, right? Yes, correct. Okay, and, and most recently Bloodborne. So thank you so much for being here. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, MD, and I'm happy and honored to be speaking with your fans. Thank you. They they were they were really excited too. They were like, "Oh, I love almost everything she's worked on." That's great. <laughs> okay, I think I think where I want to start is how did or mo better yet, what is it that you do in games? Because you're 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 um you are credited as an orchestrator and sometimes a composer. Some people I think don't know the 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 difference. So could you explain a little bit of what you do? So when I compose on games, um, my job is to create the music, to compose the themes, orchestrate, produce. I'm doing everything. I'm the composer. When I work as an orchestrator, then my job is to craft these elaborate orchestral arrangements that the orchestra will play, but I work with the theme that another composer has created. That's a beautiful work. I love it. It's given me a chance to work on high-profile titles, and I cherish that. Uh, but it's another composer's music or ideas, and my job is to craft the big orchestral arrangement and the sound that you hear. Uh, oh, interesting. The game. So it's more like just being the arranger or orchestrator who comes up with the sound. So when you when you're the orchestrator, do you get the composer's um, music in in piano format, or how how is that? Composers have to uh, create MIDI files, and they work with samples with virtual instruments. Oh, so that I see. the music is approved by the studio. And uh, our job is, I mean, as composers, we create these mock-ups, mock-ups with samples, just for our clients to be able to hear and experience. Mm -hmm. So I get like an audio file and MIDI file, then, but then my job is to translate the composer's vision to the orchestral arrangement. And I have to take, I have to make decisions. We decide how many musicians, depending on the budget, depending on the style of the game. Oh, my job is see. My job is to know the history of the genre, and this is why I love it so much because I, mm. I'm a gigantic fan of fantasy and science fiction, horror, and action. So for me, just that deep understanding of how similar games have been scored in the past really helps. Because mm -hmm. it's that deeper knowledge and just passion. I mean, I'm just a gigantic fan of science fiction, horror, and fantasy since childhood. So for me, you know, I've been watching these movies and playing games for a long time. Oh, that's awesome. So you, you play the games as well? Yeah, I do. I have to. Oh, it's that's cool. It's important. For, I mean, I, I love the games. I, for instance, I love Gears of War 2 and 3, and I work oh. on them. It's important for me to have that emotional connection and also to have played the game so I know how the world feels, you know, how the maps, how the map, map walkthrough goes. It's really important to have a physical experience of the game, not just musical. Yeah, definitely. And I think it also helps to see how gamers, how the music makes gamers feel uh, exactly. for you to, to, yeah. to get that feeling. That's awesome. So you, you mentioned that you've been into all these genres and uh, the music for them went, since you were a, a child. How did the, how did this all start? Um, I was born and raised in Bulgaria, Eastern Europe, which was a used to be a communist country. So my outlet was books and art and fantasy. And science mm. fiction was really big in the Russian bloc countries because science fiction was like this vehicle that you can tell stories and yeah. package them as crazy fantasy, and the stories actually could be critical or interesting right, about right. the society. So I started reading science fiction as a child, but I remember distinctly eighth grade, like the summer of eighth grade going in, into ninth grade, just reading, just voraciously reading science fiction, collection of short stories or Latin American science fiction, just like really immersing myself in fantasy and sci-fi and uh, loving it. So, mm -hmm. and, and then we have a Space Invaders pinball machine here. Oh, wow. I've been on the, on the Macintosh computer for the last 25 years, so I kind of had to catch up on the PC games. Yeah. Um, but then when the consoles came out, like, you know, PS3 or Xbox, we got the consoles and I started playing AAA games. 
-hmm. and just really loved it. It was such a frontier. It felt like, oh my God, this is so, so much fun. I love the stories. I love the visuals. Um, and yeah, and my heart is in games. That's awesome. And when did you, when did you start to compose and, and work with music in games? specifically um i started so i came to los angeles in 1999 to begin a career as a film composer my first composing jobs were short films afi american film institute sh films uh, then i started orchestrating for steve jablonski steve jablonski is a transformers composer and yeah. he, he's the one who opened the most amazing life-changing doors for me by plugging me in to work on the transformers video games so that was 2007, 2008, Gears of War 2. I was the lead orchestrator and just really loved it. Just I had such a great time. Then to Gears of War 3, I would say probably, and then 2009, I composed on the Transformers game. Steve Jablonski wrote the theme, and I had a bunch of in-game cues and all the big battles between Megatron and uh, oh, awesome. Air Force. So I would say probably around 2008 is when my first composing uh, uh, credit on games dates and I quickly thought to myself this is so much fun it makes me happy it energizes me uh, I really connected with the game developers um, I have to tell you something in 10th grade my best friends my posse was the computer <laughs> scientists so I really oh, felt wow. comfortable with brilliant people who are equally creative as much as they're scientifically minded yeah. left brain right brain balance so I just felt really comfortable in that community and just loved it with my heart awesome so how, what's the di you've worked on movies as well. Um, what what do you feel is the the biggest difference when you're composing or even orchestrating for a video game? So film in, the music in film is composed to picture because film is a linear media, and um, our best friend is the editing. So we have to be really attuned to how mm. scenes are edited, because the editing has an emotional arc and a storytelling arc. And uh, the music has to totally fit the emotional beats of how the film has been edited. Mm -hmm. So in games, the music creates the whole experience. It becomes yeah. the beating heart. I mean, it's completely immersed. If you just sit down and you immerse yourself in that world, and the music is a huge part of that because the music captures the world or has to capture mm -hmm. the world, the feelings, the time period, the characters, the bosses, the monsters, whatever it is. So it's much more immersive experience. That's why... the the game themes are such important part oh, of the yes. score because the theme has to immediately transport you into that world. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like a real affinity. I mean, I really just enjoyed. But I would say the difference between film and game is that in film, it's a linear medium. You just watch the movie from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a three-act structure. You know, we have act one, act two, act three. Uh, which is the typical kind of hero journey, the hero mm -hmm. journey trajectory. Whereas in games, you know, you get beaten, you repeat a level, maybe you can, I don't know, you just uh, you go back and, and, and repeat. So it's just a different experience. There's more doors that open in video games because it's like you don't know what they're going to do. You know, the play, especially in big, big open open games, it's like you don't know what the player is going to do. So the, the music has to constantly almost follow the player. I love that. And every player has an individual experience, mm -hmm. and uh, it's highly individual. And and even when you play multiplayer, it's still it's your own experience, and it's different from anybody else's. You you mentioned themes. I I, I think the themes to games, like you were saying, are extremely important because that's the first thing that they that that, that gamers hear. It, it immediately almost tells you what the game is about. How do you go about approaching a theme, and how how do you how do you make that theme a part of the whole soundtrack? Okay, so composing for games is a collaborative art. We work closely with our collaborators, which are the visionaries behind the game, the game designers, the mm -hmm. um, game developers. So um, there is a lot of conversations that take place. Uh, usually we get images, like maybe prototypes of levels, environments, characters, mm -hmm. So already from the images, we get a sense of the visual style, the visual aesthetics. So the music has to match the aesthetics of the game perfectly. 
And then mm -hmm. we start the conversations about the music. And we begin with the bigger picture and hone in to the, to, on the details. So the bigger picture is the style, the tone. Let's see how similar games have been scored in the past. How do you want to be innovative? So we think, about, we think about the tradition, but we also try to be innovative because in today's market, um, the most important thing that each game has to accomplish is to stand apart from the competition mm -hmm. because there's so many games. And the musical score becomes a huge component in branding the game, kind of make, making the game distinctive. So we talk about signature themes, signature style. So if you think of, if you think of uh, Battlefield or if you think of, um, I don't know, maybe even last, The Last of Us, it has such mm -hmm. a distinctive tone, distinctive style. Yeah. Um, or any of the handheld games, like any of the casual games, they have to have their own kind of almost like jingle mm -hmm. style motif because uh, they have to stand apart. And uh, our job is to talk to our collaborators and we ask questions, they give us briefs and feedback. And the core question is how do we create the experience, the aesthetics, the style that perfectly matches your vision? Awesome. That's that's the big, biggest question. And then we talk about orchestration and sound and style and uh, live musicians or maybe you know, electronica. But these are the more specific questions. The bigger questions are aesthetics and style and tone. And does this process happen like in the very beginning of the of the of the development of the game? I would say you know, the, develop, the the games have a fairly long development cycle, anywhere between two, three, four, seven years. Like the Blizzard games take a long time to develop. Yeah. And um, I would say not at the very beginning, but probably when the game developers have art to show. So you get to see the environment, you get to see the characters, the monsters, the bosses, because um, any collaborator that you work with, you should you have to present them with something tangible for them to kind of see your ideas in addition mm -hmm. to the talks. Someone was wondering, uh, they asked the question that uh, how much creative freedom do you have when producing music for games? Like, do the developers... When you produce something, do they tell you we want it to sound like this, or do you pretty much take what they're telling you and give them something? Like, how much freedom do you get? That's a very good question. Remember, mm -hmm. it's a team sport. Um, we serve the vision of the game developer with all of our imagination and talent. So the ideal situation is where the developer already has a pretty good vision of what they want. They have a pretty good vision about the style, the visual aesthetics. And then they also tell us, well, I also like this and this and this soundtrack. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to it, but also surprise us. Because oh. then that's what, where they have that very cogent vision, but they also say, well, bring us your ideas as well. Because then you feel like you're truly collaborating and you're truly giving some of your ideas. And we bounce ideas back and forth. And this is all done in these conversations and meetings and prototyping and submitting demos. Um, mm -hmm. Because I would say the ideal situation is where the creators have a good vision, clear vision, yeah. clear aesthetics. Um, I have a, a really big Dragon Age following. Yeah. And um, so I, I just have to ask about your work on Dragon Age 2 because the soundtrack on that in that game is just gorgeous. And I think what you were the orchestrator uh, on on that on that game, right? Well, that's that, that I have to I have to I have to say congratulations because the sound of of that music is just it's gorgeous. Like how, and it's it's very different from Dragon Age Origins, but it just fits the game so well. Um, how what was the process like for that? The composer was Inon Zur. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, he's one of the top game composers. So he comes from, from a rich orchestral background. He was classically trained and he has command of the orchestra. But I also loved how he incorporated like period instruments, medieval yeah. instruments, medieval fields. Because you have to remember something. The music has to create that world. So mm -hmm. it's a medieval uh, fantasy game. So you have to be fully immersed. And the orchestra sounds in a way that just transports you into that world. So what he was able to accomplish is that perfect match, perfect marriage yeah. between the musical vision and the game's, game's aesthetics. And um, he had um, live musicians, like live um, medieval viola, it's called viola da gamba, and uh, oh. the plucked you know, guitars and lyres, and uh, the orchestra was also live. And then he programmed percussion and programmed orchestral effects on the computer. So it's that fusion, that hybrid between orchestra and samples, electronics, 
uh, but not like electronics in a modern sense, more like just percussion, you know, timbre. Uh, I see. And then period instruments, instruments that actually are associated with Baroque music or medieval music. Is that pretty common to, to, to add? Uh, someone else was asking, um, how do you feel about incorporating te- the te- technical, uh, technical, um, the, the technical side to a, a, a soundtrack? with an actual orchestra, the actual music. like Is that common to do? That's very common. Uh-huh. In fact, most scores for video games, for console games, AAA games these days, are a hybrid. We call them hybrid between uh-huh. orchestra and a lot of electronics. And um, the electronics could be percussion, um, synthesizers, pads, sound effects, um, arpeggiators, uh, you know, guitar effects. That that could be they could be anything, as long mm-hmm. as the overall sound fits with the vision of the game, uh, mm-hmm. because ultimately that's what we, we what we want. But also you have to remember one thing: it's a function of the budget. Mm-hmm. Only so few games have budgets for gigantic orchestras where, where you record timpani and everything. Many AAA games only have the budget to record um, orchestral sections, like you know, strings. Brass uh, and maybe woodwinds, maybe timpani, but then the percussion will be programmed because also the composer wants to have control over exactly how the percussion is going to sound. Blizzard is one of the few companies that hire a full orchestra, like full classical orchestra. Oh, wow. And on top, the composers also record um, ethnic musicians, like for instance, Chinese players, Chinese oh, flutes, nice. of erhu, which is like, like a viola, but kind of a Chinese viola. Uh-huh. And uh, they blend all these instruments together. Like on Mists of Pandaria, uh, there was a lot of Chinese instruments recorded. Mm-hmm. And um, one game that is very heavy into the electronica and uh, percussion and loops is uh, StarCraft. StarCraft yeah. always has that very modern sound, almost like Transformers, you know, tapping mm-hmm. drums, uh, pulsing strings. And that's the aesthetics of of that game. But World of Warcraft is very orchestral and very much into the tradition of fantasy orchestral music. We were talking a little bit about Bloodborne when um, in when I just when I when we first started. Um, And what what was your first of all, what was your role? Because that was that is the most recent uh, your role in, in Bloodborne. So Bloodborne is the flagship game for PlayStation 4. Um, mm-hmm. It was developed by the Japanese studio From Software, and uh, it was published by Sony. So uh, we had six composers, three Japanese in-house composers, and three American guest composers. Oh, wow. So my job was the lead orchestrator, and I orchestrated the entire game. And uh, my uh, challenge was to be sure that the sound is unified, and we establish a very coherent sound so you can't really say, well, you know, there were six composers, but it sounds like uh-huh. one experience. Um, so um, the, the style was this gothic uh, Victorian um, monster style. I would say similar to how Dracula films, classical mm-hmm. Dracula films were scored, where you have a full orchestra, and especially um, there's a large choir, gigantic choir, singing loudly um, and horrifically, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> the choir is very prominent. And also about Bloodborne, the developers made a judicious choice, wonderful choice to use the music carefully, not always, not throughout, but mostly for the boss battles and for the hunter's hub. Uh So you don't always hear blaring music. But when the music starts to play, you know that's the boss battle and some Uh horrific monster is going to come and it's it's a hardcore game, so it's really really visceral and violent. So um, all the boss battles were some of the hardest music I've (laughs) played. It was challenging because it, it was intense and um, riveting and um, very um, dissonant, just very mm-hmm. disturbing, but it's fantastic. I'm so happy I worked on it. It's yeah. an accomplishment. And uh, the game has been reviewed. I mean, the game has been getting fantastic reviews for the score, and, and it's it was a happy experience. Awesome. Someone was asking, uh, and you could tie this uh, as to, to Bloodborne as well because of... Um, just because of so much emotion that is, that is going on in there, as well as history and just past uh, historical, um, or not not so much historical, but I guess literary uh, influences. Um, they they said when composing, what are the motions you go through? 
uh, like the research, the emotions? What do you, what do you, how do you go about that? That's a very good question. Well, one of the levels on Bloodborne, the Ibrietas, the one that mm-hmm. she looks, she's a monster that looks like a Cthulhu, like a kind of a sort of oh, wow. um, the the dragon. I mean, the octopus sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's one of the upper levels. So, I mean, I I really love the fact that, and I cherish the fact that I really have read H.P. Lovecraft and uh, Edgar Poe and uh, a lot of fantasy and just really feel very fluent in terms of understanding how fantasy works, you know, the protagonists, the world, the whole kind of phantasmagorical world, and also Mm -hmm. the score, the score, like how Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula was scored or any other, um, you know, Kronos, like early classical vampire movies or Dracula mm-hmm. movies because all these monsters in a sense have their roots in the vernacular that is you know monsters and, and right and um so it was just basically the whole idea is we have these orchestral resources of a large gigantic orchestra we recorded in London at a studio called Air which is fantastic mm-hmm. and uh, we had 32 voice choir which we um and then the, the choral writing is just so intense because you have this choir singing highest notes and lowest notes and vocal effects like, you know, rumble, rumbles or whispers or diabolical chants. Because oh, wow. there's also this big, big kind of big monastic, you know, monk sort of undertow. I, I didn't really see a lot of visuals. I saw environments. I saw the streets of that city that's plagued by, um, that's just this this disease that everybody gets the disease and turns into a monster. So I did see prototypes early on and I could picture myself into that environment and the colors and the detail. Um, So that was given to me before I orchestrated the first note. So it's really important to really imagine the world and imagine Mm -hmm. the detail and the time period. And it's it's a game about people turning into horrific monsters because of this plague-like disease. Mm-hmm. So, um, and again, you can then you draw parallels with, you know, movies, past movies, past games. And uh, I would say it was a fantastic experience. I really loved it. The Sony team was great. They were just wonderful to work with. And all, yeah. th- this is like one of the highlights, probably the highlight. And the music was really hard. <laughs> so, um, it was a highlight of, of last year. Awesome. I'm, 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 I'm with what you're, what you said. You're interested since you were a, a, a kid. It, it sounds like it was right up your alley. Yep, yeah, I'd say that. <laughs> how did you get involved with Bloodborne? Like, how did that? How, how did how did you find that job? Um, I am known uh, to understand the horror vernacular because I uh. <laughs> have composed on a lot of uh, horror films. Not so much games, but like all sorts of monster movies on the Sci-Fi Channel. Um, so that's the one reason because I knew that, again the music, the style. Uh, also, the previous year, um, Sony uh, Film came up with this uh, science fiction action film called Elysium. Uh, that oh, that right. was a Sony film. It's a film. So the composer on the Elysium is uh, Ryan Ammon, and I was his mm-hmm. orchestrator on the Elysium. So we already had a working re- relationship, and because Ryan composed the theme to Bloodborne. Um, the Sony. Uh, oh, did he? Yeah, the Ryan oh. Ammon composed the theme. So the Sony producers understood that's a good match uh, between mm. my relationship with him and my no- knowledge of horror music. It's it's a good match. So just oh, cool. um, I've, I've I met my um, I met my colleagues at Sony Computer Ent- Entertainment about five years ago, and we stayed mm-hmm. in touch. And it was just an opportunity to work together. But it's also a relationship that I've cultivated over five years, and they sort of watched me. Rise through, rise through the ranks. So, you know, in, in our business of entertainment, it's all about cultivating these relationships and building trust because a lot of money is at stake. A lot of, mm-hmm. you know, so much is at stake for the game to be successful. The recording sessions are very expensive because you have an orchestra of 100 people yeah. and they get paid a lot of money and the studio is really yeah. expensive. So a huge amount of money is at stake. And uh, obviously the game has to be commercially viable it has to be um, success, commercial success. So uh, for anybody to get a job like this, a relationship has been been cultivated over years. Mm-hmm. So um, that was the Bloodborne story. And it's, it's an opportunity I, I really cherish. And I'm just so happy I got to work on it. I- I'm happy you did too. Thank you. Um, someone was asking if, do you, do you have a favorite emotion 
to work with in 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 music, especially for games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll tell you something. My favorite genre in both games and film is dystopia, like the futuristic, dark ah. futuristic. Um, so I just have a particular affinity, maybe because I grew up in a communist country that was so dystopian. And uh -huh. I've always been a real fan of that. I would probably say um, dark, serious emotions are up my alley. Um, fantasy, uh -huh. big sweeping narratives. Like, you know, I'm right now pitching for an exorcism movie and I just, I want to get... Oh. <laughs> Has big choirs and and fires. Maybe just he can picture fires, but my <laughs> choir. So I would say dramatic, big sweeping drama, thematic music. I mean, I also like happy emotions, but uh, somehow my music lends itself to darker, imaginative, evocative. I also love fantasy, like Dragon Age two and mm -hmm. um, Witcher three, Witcher two and three. I just loved, oh. uh, you know, the environments. And uh, yeah, I really w wish I, I really want to work on fantasy because I think that this will just be such a fantastic experience and I'll be. Yeah. yeah, that that dark that dark medieval sound it bleeds into fantasy as well easily. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think we're gonna tran uh, make the transition to your albums. Well, this this was this is the second one the the woman astronaut. And the first one is a, a, a Warrior's Odyssey. Am I am I right? These are the two uh, pr uh, personal albums that you have made. First of all, a Warrior's Odyssey. Could you talk a little bit about that? How did you c come up with this idea, or why 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 this? I just want I just wanted to show how passionate I am about game scoring for both projects for both solo albums, the intention was to grow as a game composer, grow as an artist. So uh, Warrior Odyssey came out in 2012, mm -hmm. and uh, I had just worked on Gears of War 3. Gears of War 3 came out in November 2011, and mm -hmm. I, I thought to myself, well, this is the most amazing opportunity so far in my career, and uh, I felt like this was just such a lucky break in a sense. My, my mm -hmm. job on Gears of War 3 for which Steve Jablonski is the composer. My job was to work on, uh, do some of the interactive music, and I was the lead orchestrator for the entire score. So I thought to myself, well, I just worked on one of the most amazing games, and let mm -hmm. me now sit down and actually compose music, uh, maybe compose spec demos for shooters, because I felt like I could now start pitching as a composer on shooter games. Mm -hmm. So that was the intention, just to, it came from a very idealistic place to grow as a composer, to grow as an artist, and to show my passion um, to game developers how passionate I was about composing for games. So mm -hmm. the city was a huge success. Um, it brought me about seven jobs. I mean, speaking about... Oh, nice. It was incredible. Small, I mean, I would say um, Steam games, um, iPhone games, uh, PS PC games, but um, one game did go cross-platform and uh, um, medieval games. So the whole idea was to grow as an artist and show passion and That's build amazing. upon that momentum of Gears of War 3 because I just had worked on a big title and it, it was just worth it to do something with the momentum and say, well, see, I'm really passionate, I want to grow. And so I created the first album. The second album, the same thing. I had just worked on um, Ender's Game. Mm -hmm. which really inspired me. It, uh, that, that journey, these kind of stories inspire me because that's the journey of Ender, but it's also similar to my journey growing up in Bulgaria, then leaving yeah. Bulgaria to come to um, America, going to school, and then finally going into a professional career. So my album has three acts, exactly like Ender's Game, and they coincide with the three phases of life that I've experienced so far, adolescence, young adult, and maturity. And uh, actually, I mean, there even even the second act, flight school, <laughs> comes right out of, out of uh, Ender's game because he goes to flight school and then he becomes yeah. commander. So that was the big inspiration. And then, I mean, the thing is, I also asked myself, well, I haven't composed to date a space uh, themed composition. And that's one thing I'm missing. I'd like to do. Yeah. So the whole idea was let's grow as a composer and let's just do something I haven't done before on a job. And I'm really happy I did it. I'm oh, so yeah. Happy. It, it's so gorgeous. You guys really have to check this out. I'm going to be doing a giveaway of this album. I'm going to try to do maybe two or three. So I will be giving a, a, a code, a digital code for, for this album to uh, some of you that have asked questions. Um, because it's just, it's so gorgeous. 
I I love it. it it's 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 sci-fi ish, but at the same time, it's got that orchestra that the the strings and it's just oh, it's so it's so beautiful. Well, I love you. it. It's also a personal piece in a sense that obviously the woman asked me out is completely fictitious, but also Gravity came out and I watched a documentary on women astronauts and I mm -hmm. thought to myself. You know, but th there's also another reason why it's called women astronaut because there are more women who have been in space, percentage-wise. They're like 11% women of all astronauts, and there are very, very, very few women who have scored studio features or you know get like top commissions like orchestra or opera, like one percent. And wow. it's pretty. It's an interesting statistics, and I just wanted to make people aware of it that there are more women who have been cos you know in cosmos than women composers, and I think it's just worth just being aware of it. So the whole idea yeah. was to, to write something that's really personal, that comes from a place of memories and uh, also is loosely based on my own journey, but um, package it as a kind of a sci-fi personal transcendental story. I'm just really happy I did it. I grew a lot and um, there's nothing more beautiful than creative work than people and fans appreciate. So I'm really grateful. The resonance, yeah. just the critical resonance has been incredible and I'm happy about that. Yeah, no, definitely. It's it, that's what I wanted to say that the not only it, it's interesting that it, it not only represents your your journey uh not uh, in kind of um echoing back to your work on Ender's Game, you personally and then also representing yourself as a as a woman composer and the woman astronaut. So I I think it's a great idea. It's it's very good. I'll have links in the description where you guys could uh, purchase it. Um, it is very worth worth your guys's time to listen to it. Um, I hope I hope you get some kind of awesome AAA sci-fi uh, out of this. Thank you. That's, I'm working yeah. towards that goal. I'm building relationships. You know, I'm here to stay. I'm I'm very passionate about games, working with game people. I'm passionate about film too. So it's just a matter of time. You know, an artist's career takes time to just state and go on. So this is my creative work now, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, things are going awesome. well. I'm happy. I'm I'm glad for you. Thank you so much, MD. I think to to close off, uh, a lot of people were um, wondering. Um, in a, it, it, for them to, to get into this kind of work for scoring for games. How do you have any recommendations, any tips? How would they go about getting into uh, scoring for games? That's a very good question. The most important thing to begin with is have a very strong portfolio, which means compose, 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 polish your skills, have circles of listening circles where you get together with your friends and you critique your each other's work mm -hmm. because um, the first thing that anybody would ask you will show me your music and you only have one chance to impress people uh -huh. and whatever you send out into the world or whatever you post on, on SoundCloud has to be very strong and if you wonder how strong well then research and study closely the music of the top game composers in you know, Zor, Jason Graves um, Jack Wall, you know, that's the level, that's where the bar is set. And mm -hmm. um, I, I would encourage young composers who are just finishing school or in school or a couple of years of professional experience, really focus on your portfolio, your demo, because your demo is your calling card. And once mm -hmm. you have that demo really well, um, like really polished, then you have to start net networking. Um, networking means like going to conventions where game developers gather, where other game audio people gather. So networking to me always has meant one thing, contributing to the community, giving back first before expecting to receive anything. Oh, and just being really proactive, like I do a lot of mentoring. Um, other people teach classes on like contracts or seminars, I mean um, contracts or the, the whole paperwork thing. So there, there are ways how people can become visible in the game community by giving back first. Game developers have one challenge, to make sure that their game stands apart from the competition. This is why we talk about signature themes and signature mm -hmm. sound, because music becomes a branding device, the device that will brand the game and set it apart from anything else. So the game is not just like any other shooter out there, but right. th that specific shooter. So our job is really big because we become, you know, we have to create these jingles that are so distinctive, so memorable. I mean, think of Gears of War 2. Um, I wrote this blog. It's, um, it's, um, I, I would encourage 
people to read. Um, it's a really good discussion of how you compose a signature theme. It's published, oh, it's published on um, a site called Output. Dot com output is a sample maker so go on output.com under blogs okay. look for gears of war 2 theme um, because one of our biggest jobs is to be able to compose signature themes strong musical voice strong collaborative skills killer demo technical fluency stay current write great music that's evocative and um, dramatic and very distinctive and uh, have have entrepreneurial spirit because it's very much about pushing yourself out there and being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur. And it's it's that package of skills, not just one skill. It's just package of being a great artist, great human being, entrepreneurial, right. and a mm -hmm. great, uh, fantastic collaborator. Awesome. That that that's very good advice. And the I I will put um, if you could provide me with the link. Yeah. Um, I, I'll put the link in the description to output dot com. Yeah. Because um, I think I think that that would be a very good uh, article for those of you that want to get into this kind of work for you guys to read. Um, so I, I'm gonna let you go, but thank you so much, and, and thank you from from my subscribers as well. MD, thank you for the honor. It's such a great pleasure to to speak with you, and I'm happy I could share a little bit with your fans. I cherish the fans. Thank you for playing games and listening to music. And we truly, the fans make what we do meaningful. Without you guys, yeah. it's not meaningful. So thank you. I truly cherish this. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. okay so thank you so much for your guys' questions, for participating. Um, and yeah, I will contact those of you that, that uh, won the giveaway for the album. Uh, for those of you that provided some questions for this interview. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.